in many ways, an upstanding bourgeois gentleman, at least in his self-presentation, in his manners, in um, the amount of stock he laid in the official markers of professional success. And yet he painted and created in such a way that you know, he wasn't going to get any of these things, you know? He was setting himself up for <laughs> radical failure. So Manet was born in Paris in 1832. He was not a bohemian. He was born to a father who was in the Ministry of Justice. His mother was the daughter of an, a diplomat. Really, I've heard of his parents urging embarks on a, a brief, not particularly distinguished naval career that lasts really just one sea voyage. And he came back and he started in the studio of a very academic conservative artist named Thomas Couture. But he was there for six years. So think about that, six years of copying at the Louvre, six years of looking to the old masters. In a lot of ways, Manet's ambitions um, were that of a, a traditional artist. But he's quickly going into a new direction. Manet's challenge was to um, create a kind of art that measured up to the great old masters of the past, but also create an art that was fresh and new and spoke to modern times. And this is a sort of fundamental tension and productive tension that Manet um, kind of explored. And artists like Monet were just fascinated by the way he was upending and redoing traditional art subjects in a new way. He's trying to be accepted, to be talked about, and when he does make it, such as when he shows Olympia and Christ mocked, he's completely criticized. So Manny's affiliation with the Impressionist movement is entirely informal. Much as they would have liked him to participate in their group exhibitions, he always refused to do so. And in the public mind and, and critics' minds, um, he was seen to be their kind of unofficial leader. It was a very interesting dialogue, and it did help shape his career. But it's a more complicated back and forth between them, um, where there's dialogue and there's emulation, but there's also rivalry and distance. He was famous as, you know, one of the few men of his time who knew how to talk with a, with a lady. And that's, you know, probably because he had many female friends and, and took their ideas seriously and shared their interests um, in a way that, that probably few artists of his, uh, male artists anyway, of his time did. And one of the most important was an artist herself, Berthe Morisot. She's an um, incredible, fashionable lady. And so he finds in her the perfect muse, the perfect inspiration for his beginning to move into modern life subjects. He was a real connoisseur of feminine fashion and he would go around to the dressmakers and the milliners and you know and there's nothing more emblematic of modernity than fashion you know it's a sort of a metaphor for modernity and the fast-paced nature of modern life. Manny was always a committed studio artist but it's certainly true that as his health began deteriorating in sort of 1879-80 you see an increase of smaller format work these little still life paintings of fruits and um, flowers especially. But he puts them in a glass vase so that you see the stems, so that all of that stuff that happens when you put flowers together and the different, he shows that. Jean, which was one of his final salon paintings in 1882, it encapsulates so well many of Manet's interests uh, in the last five or six years of his life. In the context of contemporary reception, Jeanne was the star. Jeanne was really seen as the highest achievement and, you know, occasioned the highest praise that Manet had received throughout his whole career. For me, it's a culmination of his ideas about feminine beauty and, as the critics said, she was a bouquet. You know, which must, I think, have been gratifying and encouraging to an artist who I think continued to believe, although he was by that point quite ill, continued to believe that he would lick his illness and continue to paint. So he's one of these pivotal figures who, um, whose art is so rich that you just, you feel like you, you, 
you can never really penetrate it. It, it raises so many questions, but there's this kind of, um, there's this mystery to it. He's inconsistent, but in a great way. And that's what makes him the most fascinating artist of the 19th century, because you can never classify him just as he didn't allow himself to be classified. I think, you know, there's lots that we don't know about Manet the person. He was a pretty discreet individual. But one thing that we know for sure is that he was extraordinarily generous. And I think that his art, too, is a form of generosity, a way of sharing his own private delight in often quite simple things, you know, a basket of strawberries or a bouquet of flowers with, with all of us.